All right, so in the past few videos we've been talking about purine catabolism, and for the most part purine catabolism is a lot more interesting and medically relevant than pyrimidine catabolism. Um, that's mostly because a lot of mutations um, there have a tendency to exist in purine catabolism enzymes. For example, we talked about in a previous video that we have severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome, which is characteristic of adenosine deaminase deficiency, and then also recall that purines in general get degraded in humans to uric acid, and when we have problems excreting that uric acid, or it's thought to be the problem, we can get uh, purine uh, buildups like gout, and that's a very painful disease, and so for the most part purine catabolism is a lot more interesting than pyrimidine catabolism, but we still have to do pyrimidine catabolism, all right? Now, this right here is the pathway for catabolism of thymine. And in general, as we'll see in the next video, um, uracil catabolism, which is going to do this reductive pathway in humans on the left side, and we'll see that soon, is going to follow exactly the same set of enzymes, except thymine catabolism is going to have an extra enzyme at the end because thymine has this extra methyl group. All right. Now, thymine initially is going to react with dihydrouracil dehydrogenase, Another name for this enzyme, because it does not just react with uracil for obvious uh, reasons, is dihydropyrimidine dehydrogenase. This double bond is going to get reduced. Dihydropyrimidinase is going to break open the remainder of the pyrimidine ring into this molecule called beta isobutyrate. All right. Now there's another enzyme, beta ureidopropionase, and that is going to be an enzyme that uses water to hydrolyze, hydrolyze off both ammonia and bicarbonate in this case. And that's going to give us this molecule right here, which is called beta amino isobutyrate. Now, the reason that you have to have an extra enzyme in thymine catabolism, which is just a transaminase, is because of this methyl group. Now this methyl group right where my mouse is, that's the methyl group that is on thymine, the one that differentiates it from, uh, from uracil. Okay? If you did not have that methyl group there, you could imagine that once you get down to this point, that methyl group will also not be there. So take a look at uracil catabolism. Now I'll show you this in the next video, but uracil catabolism follows the reductive pathway, and you end up with this molecule down here referred to as beta alanine. Beta alanine is actually a really important molecule in humans, particularly in skeletal muscle, and we actually have an entire video on beta alanine, so check that out. Suffice to say, beta alanine plays an important role in skeletal muscle uh, buffering during vigorous exercise. Uh, but the point is, because we have this extra methyl group here, uh, we're going to have to, this is not beta alanine, so we're going to have to deal with this a little bit differently. So we're going to transaminate amino isobutyrate to make something called methylmalonyl semialdehyde. Now, now this looks dangerously close to uh, methylmalonate, okay, or methylmalonyl-CoA, and perhaps you've seen methylmalonyl-CoA in uh, the remainder of beta oxidation for three carbon fatty acids, okay, particularly for propionyl-CoA. And it turns out that this molecule is just going to be catabolized um, ultimately into uh, that pathway for propionyl-CoA. Uh, ultimately, this will get this uh, aldehyde will get oxidized into a carboxyl, and this will be mutated into ultimately succinate, which will go into the TCA cycle. Okay. Now, one of the questions you should ask yourself is the following. Okay. Why are there no calories in terms of you know we have to talk about dietary calories derived from nucleotide degradation? Now, based on this, and I briefly showed you this but also you hopefully have seen purine catabolism. And the question is, why, are, why do we not talk about calories derived from nucleotide degradation? Okay, the reason has to do with the fact that if you look at normal catabolic pathways, so glycolysis, okay, um, you look at beta oxidation is a good example for fatty acids. You look at the pathways for amino acid catabolism, right? you see a lot of NADH that's derived from that, in some cases FADH2. If you look at purine catabolism, and you look at thymine and uracil catabolism, you don't see NADH coming off, NADH that we could use in the electron transport chain. You don't see FADH2. So there really aren't any reduct reduced coenzymes that are produced by these pathways that could be used to pump protons in the electron transport chain. 
Because of that, it's not really worth talking about calories derived from nucleotide degradation. And so when you look at a food label, the only thing you'll see is protein, fat, and, and sugar or carbohydrates. That's the only thing you'll see. You won't see calories derived from nucleotides. Okay. Now, it is true this methylmalonyl uh, semialdehyde will get turned into succinate. That is true. And so because of that, there's going to be a minor contribution to energy production. However, it is not, it's not warranted to include it because it is so minor compared to everything else. And in general, remember that things like lipids, amino acids, and sugars, but particularly sugars and lipids, those are catabolized preferentially for energy. In fact, for them, you'll always have catabolism of amino acids, but when there's sugar and lipids available, those will be the chosen sources of energy. Thymine and, well, in general, the, nucle the nitrogenous bases, thymine, uracil, um, cytosine, and then also adenine and guanine, those are, not, those are degraded only when there's excess of them. There is no need to degrade them for energy because you already have three other good sources amino acids, lipids, and sugars. These are just going to be degraded when there's excess of them. And that's an important point. We only are going to degrade these nucleotides when we have too much of them. Um, we don't want too many nucleotides and we don't want too few. We're only going to degrade when we're in excess. Okay. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. In the next video, we're going to briefly go over uracil catabolism. And then after that, we'll do cytosine catabolism. Thank you very much.